Today, March 22, 2020, is the fourth Sunday of Lent. I invite you, dear friends, to reflect with me on the theme, Growth in the Faith That We May See. It has been four weeks since we began our Lenten journey of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, the route by which we turn away from sin and turn towards God. This fourth Sunday is referred to as the Letare Sunday, the day of Lent on which the Church asks us to rejoice because the joy and hope that the resurrection brings is closed now. And so we can look forward with heightened excitement. This joy and hope come from the transformation we shall experience at Easter. Christ, the light of the world, who dispels the darkness of the tomb and illumines the world with his light. In the Gospel passage of today, from John chapter 9, from verse 1 to 41, we see how the light of faith gives joy to the one who discovers Jesus. The man was physically blind from the moment of his birth. But in addition to that, he did not have the eyes of faith until Jesus revealed himself to him. That was the point when he not only received restoration of his physical sight, but also the joy of faith with the serenity and satisfaction that it brings. Jesus, the light of the world, made a paste, put it on his eyes, and told him to wash in the pool of Siloam. He washed, and he was cured of his blindness. From the interrogation of him by the Pharisees, those who did not yet have the joy that comes from the light of faith, we are able to notice the development of the man's faith. At first, he thought Jesus was just like the man next door. Upon further reflection on the magnitude of what had happened to him, he was able to see that an ordinary man could not have done what Jesus did for him. Jesus must be a prophet. But when he had another encounter with Jesus, and Jesus asked him, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He responded, Tell me who he is, that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, You are looking at him. He is speaking to you. And then he said with deep conviction, Lord, I believe. From that moment of encounter, he did not just have physical sight restored, he also got an insight about Jesus, the light of faith that came from his disposition to believe. Unlike this man, who saw the hand of God in his healing, the Pharisees refused to acknowledge the truth, even when it was live and direct in the man who had been healed. We also see the crowd who had seen something extraordinary happen right before their very eyes, but they were indifferent. Somehow, it did not move them to faith. Even the parents of the man who knew what had happened were so afraid to admit the great things that God had done for fear of the Pharisees, and so they sat on the fence, too afraid to bear witness to God's goodness. They said, he is old enough, let him speak for himself. The question we need to ask, my dear brothers and sisters, is which of the characters describe you? The person that sees the hand of God in his life and allows it to be the light that leads him to faith, bearing witness to God's goodness? Are you the person who sees all evidence but simply shuts his eyes to the light of faith under the illusion of knowledge and sophistication? Or are you the person who knows but fails to confess the faith for fear? I, my dear brothers and sisters, would rather be the person 
that sees the hand of God and continues to search that I may know God better, love Him more so that I can serve Him better than before. Dear friends, in these days of Lent, let us rekindle in ourselves the light of faith that we received at baptism, that light which dispels the darkness of sin. And not only that, like the man born blind, let us make effort to grow our faith by study of the Holy Scriptures, the Bible, and reflection on its message through the practice of Lexio Divina. I pray that we may see the light of Christ more clearly from day to day. And I bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>